I will get started um, with some introductions and um, thank yous and explaining the setup for today's event. Welcome to today's conversation on Karima Lasali's book, Colonial Trauma. My name is Natalia Brizuela. I'm a professor at UC Berkeley, and along with Leticia Sapsai, I'm the co-editor of the Critical South book series published at Polity for the translation of Colonial Trauma, which originally came out in French in 2018, was just released. The Critical South book series publishes mainly through translation authors from the Global South, whose interventions complicate both the North-South divide and the established Euro-American canon of critical theory. The vision for the series is not only Leticia Sabsai and mine. This intervention that spans Africa, the Middle East, Latin America, and beyond is possible thanks to the collaborative work that we do with Victoria Colis Butelesi, Diego Falconi, Nasira Genif, Palomi Saja, Feluin Saar, who is here with us today, and Francoise Vergés, the members of the Critical South Editorial Board. Gisela Catanzaro, Rosaura Martinez, and Vladimir Safatle were also members of that board in an earlier iteration. To this group of people, my deepest gratitude for being on board and for their generosity, for sharing their wide ranging expertise and vision of what we should pay attention to, not lose track of and consider. The book series is one of the projects of the International Consortium for Critical Theory Programs, which I direct with my colleague and friend, Samir Esmir. It is funded by the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation and the Office of the Vice Chancellor for Research at UC Berkeley. And I want to thank them for their commitment to the consortium and its many projects. I very importantly want to thank the members of the consortium team, as well as the members of the Center for Interdisciplinary Research for all the work they have done to set up and help run today's online event. In particular, I want to thank Brianna George, Miranda Schoenburn, Patricia Dunlap and Tim Wyman McCarthy for their incredible, incredible work. I also want to thank um, our interpreters today, Angela Sawatsky and Sergio Sanchez for helping with the interpretation of Karima uh, as she speaks French. Um, and I want to thank very specially our panelists today, Karima, Ranjana Kana, Stefania Pandolfo, and Feluin Sar. Ranjana Kana is professor of English, Women's Studies, and the Literature Program at Duke University. She works on Anglo and Francophone postcolonial theory, literature, and film, psychoanalysis, and feminist theory. She is the author of numerous articles, but of two magnificent books. Dark Continents, Psychoanalysis and Colonialism, and Algeria Cuts, Women and Representation, 1830 to the Present. Stefania Pandolfo's research centers on subjectivity, imagination, memory, and the experience of madness in the Middle Eastern and Muslim world in conversation with psychoanalysis, anthropology, and Islamic thought. Her books include Impasse of the Angels, Themes from a Moroccan Space of Memory and Not of the Soul, Madness, Psychiatry, Islam. Feluin Sar is the Anne-Marie Bryan Chair in French and Francophone Studies at Duke University and was originally trained as an economist. Some of his most recent publications include Afrotopia, The Restitution of African Cultural Heritage Toward the New Relational Ethics, La Saveur de Dernier Maître, and the play Tras. Karima Lasali is a practicing psychoanalyst and clinical psychologist who has worked both in Algeria and France. And last but never least, I want to thank all of you out there in the audience for joining us today. In the book's opening lines, Karima Lasali explains why she wrote Colonial Trauma. The regular tools of psychoanalysis were not sufficient for her patients in Algeria to undertake the exercise of self-liberation aided by psychoanalysis because of the context, because of the extent of the psychic, linguistic, social, and political devastation brought on by colonialism and its aftermaths. 
As one reads colonial trauma, one learns details of the history of the French Republic's colonization of Algeria and the form and events of the repeated genocide of its population from the 1830s to the War of Liberation, as well as the psychic and physical destruction that has plagued Algeria since 1962 as post-colonial Algeria repeated again and again the damaging and violent operations, symbolic and real, practiced by the colonial power. The reader also learns a great deal about Algerian literature through detailed analysis of the works and words of Kateb Yassin, Jean El Mahoub Amrouche, Nabil Far, and others. La Salle explains that the book is based on the study of historical statements of facts and fictional enunciations. I would argue that even though the book places history and fiction into conversation, or more precisely, historical facts that are constructed and delivered as true statements and utterances that are framed as fictional, and these types of writing and expression share the book as a stage, literature understood broadly is in the context of Algeria and very probably many other settings marked and ravaged by colonial trauma and terror, a tool for psychic cure, for disalienation, for freedom. As La Salle writes early in the book, nothing comes closer to the texture of subjectivity than the literary text. Because of this proximity, Literature offers a window into self-liberation where psychoanalysis has not been enough. Perhaps because of its abstract and universalizing nature. A question posed by La Salle's work is how both in her work and uh, of those others engaged in the cure for disalienation, colonial or not, there's a constant dialectical relation between in her case, the Freudian psychic model the idea of a universal structure of the subject and the historically concrete, the particular social and historical context that have shaped forms of collective and individual subjectivities for generations. Is it necessary, I wonder, to keep Freud in contexts of colonial trauma? And is it always dialectics? Or can we resort to theoretical models that emerge from the specific forms of social and psychic life in specific contexts? And I hope there will be a conversation perhaps about this between Karima and Stefania, whose work on madness in Morocco also straddles the dialectic between the universal psychoanalytic model and local forms of cure. Literature as an, act, as an exercise in self-liberation. In La Salle's book, the words of writers illuminate and complicate the historical statement of facts, of trauma and terror in a colonial context. In La Salle's book, literature offers, if I may, a new form of raw material for psychoanalytic theory and for self-liberation. Next to, alongside the patient's own enunciations, we find those of literature, fictional ones. But I don't think, and maybe I'm wrong, that literature is mobilized for illustration, as La Salle says a number of times in the book, but rather as a new place to apprehend precisely as she says, the texture of subjectivity as a space where speech can be heard and felt. Literature traces the invisible margins, her words, of its own form as it strives to express or shed reflection on blank spaces and ideological blind spots, as she states. La Salle writes that novels, art, and films anticipate the cultural and theoretical work to come. Yet literature, at least in La Salle's own book, does more than anticipate the theoretical work to come. I would say to La Salle that in colonial trauma, <clears throat> literature is theory, as it speaks overtly or softly the concepts the book offers as key for understanding the effects of colonial trauma in Algeria and beyond. Blank space, denial, erasure, unnaming, disappearance, genocide, mutilation, dismemberment, offense, humiliation, dispossession, detournement, censorship, the ruination of speech, memory, trauma, terror, lineage, fratricide, alterity, subject. Brief and general, brief general and passing comments on patients appear in La Salle's book, 
but literature is the matter for the work of theorizing a different practice of cure, one that is attentive to the historical specificity of Algeria. And I hope perhaps for an exchange between Ranjana Khan and Karima Lazali on this, as Ranjana's work in dark continents both recuperates psychoanalysis of the reading practice for colonial settings, particularly North Africa, and then opens the path for cure and justice to other frameworks and expressions in Algeria cuts. Karima Lazali's book opens and ends with Fanon. Not surprising, of course, given the subject matter, a study of the psychic and political consequences of colonial oppression in Algeria. And the fact that Lasalle is a practicing psychoanalyst, both in Algeria and in France. These two mentions of Fanon at the beginning and the end of the book, I believe, offer, I believe, a way forward, a possible future away from the immense damage and loss that colonialism and its aftermaths have brought on. The book's opening epigraph is from The Wretched of the Earth, and it reads, each generation must discover its mission, fulfill it or betray it in relative opacity. Our mission today, perhaps Lasalle's mission as she builds the proper toolbox for self-liberation in colonial contexts, is to insist on the modes of expression that offer freedom. And I quote her, through a plurality of memory to emerge peacefully from history, one in which each subject can recognize itself, feel welcome and free to exist. Freedom, she writes, speaking with Fanon, is the real part of the living subject, there out of reach, yet present when speech becomes subversive." End of quote. How do we apprehend the freedom that is present just as speech becomes agitated? La Salle's last sentence in the book links freedom to song. And earlier in the book, as she discusses Kateb Yassin's work, there's a suggestion that theater is also linked to freedom, theater and song. And I hope Karima Lasali and Felouin Sar might speak about this. But Felouin has written a number of plays that works through the effects of colonialism and alienation, offering a way out of terror and trauma. In We Call It Love, about the aftermath of the genocide in Rwanda, and a new play based on Fanon and Shar titled Freedom, I'll Have Lived Your Dream Until the Very Last Day. La Salle says that writing aims to carve out a space for healing and repair in the Algerian context. But she also fleetingly suggests, as I said, that song and performance offer a more powerful possibility where language is in or is the body, where the body is the mediator between the intimate and the public, the psychic and the social, because the body bears the memory and is capable of, at the very least, rehearsing freedom. If literature gives body, as she writes, it reaches a small minority. Song and performance free the body are inherently collective and expansive in movement, always alive, and in freeing the body as it is beyond itself, always, as the body enters song and performance, even in the temporary nature of the delimited space of the visible or invisible stage, in being open or in being other, sorry, it opens towards psychic and bodily freedom. And to quote Angela Davis, quoting a civil rights movement song, freedom is a constant struggle. And so now I will pass the screen to Ranjana. Thank you, thanks. Um, thanks for that. Uh, thank you, uh, Karima, for writing such a fascinating book. And uh, Natalia, thank you so much for inviting me to participate um, in in this event with um, with new and old friends. So um, so so thank you very much for that. Um, I wanted to, uh, to to start off um, with um, with the idea of colonial trauma itself, um, how I understand um, that notion of, of colonial trauma um, as it is played out um, in, in the book, but also uh, in, in both literary writings in the colonial and post-colonial contexts, as well as um, in, uh, in psychoanalytic writings. Um, I, I think of the term colonial trauma first in relation to 
uh, Suzanne Césaire and Aimé Césaire, actually, um, when they talk about uh, the malaise, uh, Suzanne Césaire talks about the malaise of, of civilization in, in Tropique, Aimé Césaire also talks about a colonial traumatism um, that is in play. And they are working very much, of course, within a mode of um, uh, surrealist writing in connection with uh, psychoanalytic thinkers like René Ménil, um, but also uh, in relation to, uh, to, to Breton and, um, and other, other important figures in, um, in surrealist writing, such that colonial trauma there is always linked to the literary, right? It is always sort of fundamentally linked to the literary and the way in which it manifests itself um, in, um, in rhythm, in absence, um, in, um, in, in, in what I would think of as a form of prosopopeia, if you like, the emergence of, of, um, of the face um, in, uh, in traumatized form, if you like, through its fragment, through its absence, in, in, in effect, through the suggestion of a possible presence. Um, Fanon, of course, um, uh, is, is absolutely instrumental in having us think about the question of colonial trauma, the possibility and the impossibility of the uh, creation or the recognition of the imago, the fear of what might emerge for the new nation state, uh, in, in the context of, of ending, say, the wretched of the earth with, um, with, the, with, the, with the litany of colonial mental disorders as he understands it. Now, I think there have been various attempts, of course, to think about psychoanalysis contemporaneously um, uh, in, um, in, in thinking about North Africa, in thinking about Islam, um, uh, um, in in North Africa as well. I mean, of course, most um, uh, famously, perhaps even uh, infamously, Fethi Ben Slama, um, uh, Mustafa Safwan's work, I think, has been you know very important in trying to understand um, something of um, a cultural element, sometimes um, uh, um, uh, questionably, if you like, um, separated from. The historical and the political as it manifests itself. So, um, but there have nonetheless been these these, these attempts. Of course, um, Natalia has already uh, mentioned Stefania's um, wonderful work on um, on Morocco in trying to think about psychoanalysis alongside other forms of thinking through the um, the um, if if you like the the movement to. Um, a form of the subject, if you like, um, uh, a working with, um, in psychoanalytic terms, the santum, but through other modes of, 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 of thinking, of speaking, of singing, of understanding, um, uh, um, modes of, um, of, uh, of uh, attenuation, if you like, to the subject, whether that is through the pictogram, through the um, suggested absence um, of uh, an anasemic poetics, for example, or something else. Um, I think I think that what we see um, also is a participation with this book in larger conversations about what it means to think about the individual in relation to the group, and then the group, if you like, in relation to the social, to an understanding of the social that we might think of in terms of the political, we might think of in terms of the constitution of the state. And one might say that this is the question that is always present when we try to understand psychoanalysis beyond, beyond, um, beyond individuation. And I would say that it is really in social thinking with psychoanalysis, i.e. thinking of, psycho, of, of the social through psychoanalysis, that we have largely come to this question. One of the things that is so distinctive, of course, about Karima's book is that um, she is working, in a sense, in the other direction. She is working with the forms of individuation, the failures and the possibilities and impossibilities of coming 
um, into some kind of form of subjectivation, if you like, um, from, from the side of psychoanalysis, and then posing the Fanonian question, if you like. How is it that we understand the, um, uh, the, the mental disorder, um, as he would put it, in relation to uh, the, the group, in relation to the social, in relation to the political? Right. So I think that this is one of the things that is most distinctive here um, about about the book. We've also, of course, seen um, and uh, um, uh, 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 in a number of different political contexts attempts to think about um, how we understand trauma as necessarily part of the social. Um, the very structure of Nachtreklichkeit in Freud, in a sense, already plummets us into the notion of the social through the idea of a deferred action, right? That, in a sense, only um, uh, casts the traumatic as traumatic, if you like, through, um, through the social itself. Um, on the level of the individual, also perhaps even on the level of what Vamik Volkan talked about as a chosen trauma, right? A chosen trauma. We could think of maybe the 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 commem the idea of commemoration of the Algerian revolution um, in the Algerian psyche, um, uh, if you like, or at least in political discourse, as one of those chosen traumas. That that becomes the point to which everyone returns, if you like. Now, Lazali's book addresses, to my mind, um, then, two fundamental questions for psychoanalysis through the literary, right? The first is how a psychoanalyst is to treat the historical more generally, right? Um, the second is what the work of psychoanalysis does in understanding the formation of the subject in individuated form but with the idea of transgenerational trauma. How one thinks of the idea of the individuated subject in relation to the group, of course, is also implied within this. Now, of course, on one level, this idea of transgenerational trauma is always implied in psychoanalysis. The idea of the superego carries it. And then there are the more um, overt articulations of it in Freud's anthropological writings like Totem and Taboo that Karima discusses in the book, in which Freud theorizes the primal horde constituted partly through the killing of the primal father as a model for the social and for cultural institutions. The shared repressed secret of killing the tyrannical father or desiring to do so halts the possibility in principle of fratricide in Freud's version. The guilt of parasite forbids the brothers from enjoying exactly what the tyrannical father forbade them to do, i.e. Um, uh, have possession in, indeed of um, the women of the group. Um, as Lazali puts it, the trace of memory um, curbs the son's murderous desires such that the community of brothers is founded on the taboo of murder and incest. Now, Lazali points towards Freud's use of Atkinson in that, um, in that book, who explains that sometimes the opposite happens and the killing does not stop. Um, patricide, in effect, leads to fratricide when there is no trace of memory. Right, no trace of memory is the idea that is that 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 in a sense pushes towards this idea of, of fratricide. Lazuli thinks of this question of the erasure of memory through many stages, of course, and understands it as linked fundamentally to the tyrannical, to terror, and to the monarchical principle that is at the heart of the colonial presence in Algeria. And so she writes, in the French, quote, in the French political arena, the turbulent and messy transition from a singular monarchical power to a plural democratic one triggered a violent response 
that repeatedly targeted the colonies. Indeed, this unresolved and unceasing violence was a major export of France. Um, and uh, she talks, she says, the colonial lands only make the artificial division between monarchy and republic all the more apparent. So such a structure for Lazeli comes to inform various traumatic repetitions in the history of Algeria, of, of the Franco-Algerian relationship, more, more appropriately put, perhaps. The various wars that come into play through the period of colonial rule, the period of the revolution from 1954 to 1962, if the revolution is the right word to use, the war of the 1990s, and these are only compounded by the so-called natural disasters of the earthquake, of the floods, which were, um, which I think um, uh, um, uh, 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 Lazali suggests are only compounded, um, those, those, the, the earthquake and the floods are only compounded um, in, in the Algerian psyche but what, by what has happened before. But we might also add that in fact, these natural disasters are not just natural, of course, right? The, in, effect, in, in effect, they can be tied to what has happened before, precisely because they're not just natural, right? The waste pipes from the Kasbah, for example, were blocked during the war in the 90s, such that when there were floods, the Kasbah inevitably flooded because, the, um, because nothing, was, nothing was unblocked, as it were. So within this structure of repeated um, repeated violence that actually um, uh, um, functions through a, th through a structure of terror, what we see in Lazali's work is the pointing out of a denial of difference through monarchical overthrow. In a sense, we don't have the king's two bodies, but in fact, we have total erasure of what came before. So the French arrive and we have total erasure of the Ottoman Empire, for example, um, because, um, because in effect, what we're given then is the idea of the Andigène, right? The Andigène, who is not Andigène at all, um, actually, um, or maybe, maybe only partly, um, through the conformity of the FLN, um, uh, um, she, 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 then, she then asks us then, what is the capacity of the constitution of a symbolic which has been constituted itself through this totalitarian terror by which there is this consistent erasure of memory, whether that's through the Evian Accords um, or through the decision by the Algerian government to, to, um, to, um, to, to not try people during the war in the 90s. Okay, I, I know I'm, I'm sort of close to my time. I just want to sort of end, end here with, um, um, uh, with, with, a, with a question, if you like. And that is um, about the, the, the question of the feminine um, in, um, in, in the book, um, Karima. I'm interested in thinking about this, uh, the, the absence of the question of the feminine in the book as perhaps itself a symptom of the denial of difference in psychoanalysis, but perhaps also in, in your own work. Um, other models of transgenerational trauma have, have indeed tried to engage with this question of the feminine through difference. Where is the feminine here? Is it in the drive towards violence? Is it, um, in, um, in uh, um, the denial of the women who are in a sense the cause of patricide or fratricide within the model of totem and taboo. Um, it, it, it strikes me that we don't have women writers in this, but we don't have Leila Sebar, we don't have Asia Jabbar, um, uh, we, don't, um, we don't have um, also, we don't have the structure of Shahrazad and Dinarzad, right? Um, who, in a sense, are the sisters, if you like, who stage through song, through speech, um, uh, a coming into uh, subjecthood, um, if you like, um, through uh, through the conversation between women. 
Um, so I think that I will just I will just stop there. I know I've gone over time a little bit. I apologize for that. Ten minutes. Thank you, Ranjan. And now we'll, we'll move to, to Stefania. Yeah. Thank you. And I am very happy to be here. And I am very grateful to the consortium for having organized this event and giving also all of us a possibility to debate with Karima. Um, so, I begin with a quote from Nedma, uh, Kateb Yassin's Nedma, that uh, is one of the texts that has a lot of weight in, in Karima Lazali's uh, uh, reading of the question of colonial trauma and, and the question of the possibility of, of freedom in Algeria. C'était ou dire l'indicible, keep silent, or say the unspeakable. At the beginning, there is mute pain, douleur, the pain of her patients, Karima's patients, and perhaps the pain of the torment of the analyst. Uh, to borrow a phrase from psychoanalysts Nicholas Abraham and Maria Torok, um, the torment of the analyst has caught a, a rift inflicted upon the listening analyst by some secret that the patient who could not be, that some secret of the patient that could not be revealed, or perhaps a missing chapter, a blank or a disappearance. A secret which created a formation into the unconscious of the listen, of the listener, into the unconscious of the psychoanalysis, of the psychoanalyst. So the torment, the, the mute pain of the patients, Karima's patients, and perhaps the torment of the analyst. A pain without words felt as a somatic pain, not a psychic pain, choking and a sense of being crushed. Physically, because that all that there is, that is all that can be felt. This pain is not the symbolic vocabulary of a psychic body, Karima tells us in the book, as Freud says, for instance, uh, in his work on hysteria. Um, but it is the rattles of a dismembered body that is unable to speak, haunted by the ghosts of the unburied dead of, the, of Algerian history. This pain, this pain is not a symbolic pain, it's a mute pain. As I read Karima's Lazal, Karima Lazali's monumental work, which spans the history of Algeria from 1827 to the present, from the landing of the French army, the colonial effraction, the word that in the book is translated as rapture in English, rapture or violation, to the, all the way to the liberation, to the world liberation and the establishment of the independent nation followed by the internal war, as she calls it, the civil war of the 1990s and its generalization of terror, I realized that her painstaking exploration of Algerian historical and literary archives is animated by a question that is born in another scene, a scene of the unconscious, a scene of the transference in her work as a psychoanalyst. She writes from the midst of her clinic, listening to the silences, the blanks, the rifts, the crypts, the ghosts, the enigmas. It is important to, to, to reflect upon this fact, I think, because this book is offered in the mode of a psychoanalytic interpretation across singular and collective history, histories. The psychoanalytic interpretation, Lacan tells us, is meant to, quote, make waves. It's meant to shift, to punctuate, to reorganize the space of psychic life, enabling in the cure what Lazali calls a devenir étranger, a movement of becoming other, 
a possibility of being in a novel foundation of parole, of speech, and what Freud called the work of culture. Interrupting a habitus of entrapment, resentment, and self-reproach in relation to a history of loss, and hence transforming one's relation to that history, introducing what Fanon had called the leap of invention in the midst of existence, as uh, um, Karima cites him in the conclusion of the book. It is a complex book. I will first present some of the key points of our argument as I understand it, and then ask a few questions that are inspired by the resonance of her text in my own work. The book is written in a dialogue with Fanon's analysis of psychic intrusion in the psychopolitical configuration of the colony. For instance, um, when Fanon, and I quote him, speaks of perceiving life in the, in the colony and its aftermath, not as the actualization of a fundamental vitality, but as the endemic struggle against an atmospheric death. And Fanon's analysis of the colonial amputation of the indigenous culture, as he does, for instance, in uh, Racism and cult a Culture and Racism and Culture, um, which Fanon understands, uh, culture, which Fanon understands as the system of cognitive <coughs> reference or and orientation in the world, the system that when it's not there, does not allow, allow for the possibility of creation and recreation and alteration and transformation, which is what culture is about. Lazali opens on the consequences of the French colonial operation that she describes as effraction, a term that speaks of rupture, but also of the violation or transgression of the symbolic law, which unleashes a no man's land of the law and establishes a regime of terror by its genos genocidal, genocidal drive. Um, and there is a lot of discussion in the early chapters of the book of the repeated massacres and the routine mutilations of bodies and the systematic eradication of the indigenous culture in its multiplicity of languages and forms. As for the question of the the, the sort of the violation of symbolic law. Actually, I, I refer to what Ranjana was just saying, because there is a very interesting argument that I'm not going to touch upon now about the about the the two sides of the republic and uh, what happens to to the, the republic in the colony, which actually uh, sort of discloses is monarchic, um, is monarchic shadows or is monarchic phantasm. Um, so uh, the massacres and the mutilation of bodies and the systematic eradication of the, indi of the indigenous culture and its multiplicity of languages and form, Arab and Berber, Muslim and Jewish. Colonial rapture, she says, causes the destruction of the foundation of the living together. Quote, the living together is her term, le vivre ensemble. And she makes the colony into a Fabrique de la, de la disparition, a factory, a machinery of disappearance. The colonial pact, sealed by the Code de l'Indigena in 1881, invalidates the constitutive function of speech, parole, as the symbolic foundation of social and psychic life, and debases and disables the paternal and the ancestral function and with them, the possibility of genealogical and cultural transmission. Effraction, rupture, and violation happens at the level of social life as the uprooting of a system of kinship, naming through unnaming, um, the fact of eliminating the patronymical names that are associated with, uh, um, with the name of a, of, a, of, a, of a parent, grandparent, and ancestor, but are also shared within a group and, um, and they are relative to a community uh, because as she says, the French could not trace people that way. And so substituting with uh, a kind of name that is instead either invented and sometimes is actually carries uh, a sort of a, a coloration, a, a coloring of insults. Um, and uh, so naming and unnaming. 
um, exchange and ritual practices. But effraction happens also at, uh, she argues, at the, at the level and takes place at the level of psychic life. And this is one of the most fascinating sort of dimensions in the book, this actual intense conversation that Karima has with Freud and with other psychoanalysts, Abraham and Turok, Lacan, Ferenczi in the book, but with a whole corpus of the studies the, of, the, of the works of Freud on the question of uh, the relationship of the inside and the outside, sort of the 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 sort of the the engendering, the coming into being, being of psychic space, and the risk of that coming into being. So when when a fraction, then uh, colonial trauma is experienced. So, so there is this whole parallel that she makes between the colony and the psyche, uh, to some extent echoing Fanon. And so when a fraction happens at the level of psychic life. Colonial trauma cuts through the psychic skin of the subject and leaves the human being exposed to an original agony. And the term is Winnicott, actually, which evokes the helplessness, the despondency, and the terrors of early life, la détresse infantile. And it is live and, and its live experience of the fragmented body at the threshold of life and death. So the sort of the colony as a, as a, as a formation actually sort of raises a hallucinatory experience of a prior, of an early, early life prior to the founding of the subject. Those who survive uh, this trial, which is the trial of the destruction of psychic life, or it's kind of being thrown back to its prehistory, um, uh, internalize their expulsion. This is a quote from the book, uh, she says, their expulsion from culture and from life and become haunted by disappearance, their own disappearance and the disappearance of their world, a haunting which secretly torments them as the maddening and elusive pain of, the, of a phantom limb. And, and there is a lot of reflection on the question of the phantom limb of this, um, of this amputation that of something that is no longer there, of a disappearance that is physically felt as an unbearable pain. And I'm actually, I, when I was reading, I was thinking about the, the, the beautiful, beautiful film by Kader Atia, uh, also an Algerian artist, Algerian-French artist, that is called Réfléchir uh, la uh, mémoire, about the place of the phantom limb, both in medicine, in surgery, in the surgery of war, but also in the memory of France and Algeria. Because the haunting, Karima argues, is passed on in the mode of a blank, a, a blanc, in, in fact, in the French. So as the blanc d'Algerie of, uh, maybe it's a reference also to the blanc d'Algerie of Asia Jabbar, an entombed loss, a phantom, disavowed and unknown, which becomes a melancholic illness that petrifies desire at the, subjective and, at the subjective and the collective level. Such a phantom secretly animates the celebrations of Algerian independence and the establishment of a new nation, which she argues, as Ranjana was saying, um, on the exclusion of difference and uh, in which uh, um, Karima says in the book recruits both, both the Islamic religion and the Arabic language as instruments of the political, as instruments of sovereignty, but also reduces them to an instrumental form. It's ghostly haunt haunting, the ghostly haunting of the phantom returns with ferocity in the fratricidal impulse of uh, the civil war of the, of the 1990s and its psychic regime of terror, where the arbitrary killings and the mutilation of corpus, corpses carry the spectral echo of the repetition of colonial e terror. It is in this context that Karima Lazali formulates the task of what she calls a clinique de la disparition. A, a, a practice, a clinical practice of disappearance, a psychoanalysis of disappearance. 
Such a clinic amounts to engaging the phantom, making it accessible to the space of psychic and social life, where the dead can be given proper recognition and burial. And as she puts it, disappearance can be woven, spun into absence through a work of mourning. And, uh, and this question of the phantom and this configuration, I think is, is really can we can be best understood perhaps if we think of um, Abraham and Torak and also uh, Abraham in particularly essay on the phantom and his uh, concept of anasimia, uh, which is uh, um, at the symbol as as they as they define it, it is a sim the symbol understood as an exceptional work of crisis as the symbol of something that cannot be symbolized. The analyst's work, they write, is not to condone its concealment, but rather to draw forth the work of desire. In the psychoanalysis of disappearance, Lazali's intercessors, and I would like to stress this word, intercessors, um, um, are Algerian writers, as if the psychoanalyst was herself disabled, as if the psychoana psychoanalyst needed intercessors because it is caught, because psychoanalysis itself is caught within a scene that of the phantom. So the intercessors are G Algerian writers and poets in the French language, craftsmen of language and form, writers of the disaster, who practice the poetics of the dismembered body. They are Kateb Yassin and Nabil Fares, Jeanne uh, Mahoub Amrosh, Mohammed Dib and many others. In their texts, Lazali finds a narration of the censored chapters of Algerian history, a history of the colonial offense, of shame at the level of societal and psychic life, and an acknowledgement of the losses with the inception, the possibility and the, of, of the inception of a work of mourning. The detour, which is how I translate her term, détournement, by the colonial language, bears witness at once to the event of colonial coercion and the expropriation of the mother tongue, the destruction of culture, but also to, the, to a possibility of invention, Fanon's leap, and the creation, and, and the possibility of creation at the site of destruction. Kateb Yassin spoke of the French language as uh, butin de guerre, the spoils of war, but there is more. And maybe in saying this, I depart uh, from uh, Karima reading a little bit, or perhaps not. Um, as Kateb suggests in the preface to his novel Nejma, and he demonstrates throughout the work, the poetic play with the foreign colonial language awakens within the French text, the memory and form of Arabic poetics and the symbolic universe where colonial violation and disappearance open onto other vocabularies of time, destruction, and creation that exceed the analytic of colonial trauma, giving access to a novel possibility to inhabit the site of destruction. They evoke, for instance, the work of ruination, falling into ruin, and the cyclical movement of human and divine time in the writings of the 14th century philosopher and history Ibn Khaldun, who was uh, very much beloved by Kateb Yassin. Such is perhaps the unspeakable hope, and this is um, a quote from Kateb, um, la, uh, l'espérance. Uh, um, Stefania, sorry, every time you move a page, we all have an intense soundscape of your... Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Such is perhaps the unspeakable hope um, nested in the work of ruina or ruination itself, as a songe hors de mémoire, um, in English, a dream beyond memory, which is another quote from Kateb that Karima herself quotes several times in the book, a, a dream beyond memory, which is not just a hallucinatory landscape, even in the kind of the channeling of history that is sort of written in many extraordinary pages of this book, but a dream beyond memories that perhaps carries the shapes of the Arabic ruya, 
the visionary and veridical dream in Isla dream in Islamic tradition, the trace and therefore tracing the path of another unconscious and another configuration of life, history, and the soul. And um, and I want to conclude by uh, reading a passage uh, by Kateb Yassin, um, uh, where this question of the visionary dream appears. Is it sorry to interrupt, Stefania? Is it a long passage? No, no. I can also not read it. I can end there. I just want to be mindful of everyone's time and our our, our audience's time, so that we can have. But if it's a short passage, that's fine. Um, okay, I'll just. Uh... Rashid that turned a little further. He was cleaning his pipe, knocking the ashes into the void. He handed the glass to the scribe and went on after another pause, his forehead leaning against the cold rail of the balcony, letting his, his eyes fall on calm, shadowy bank at the foot of the rock. The same destiny has willed the two cities to have the ruins near them, but nowhere else the two matchless cities be, be neighbors, both sacked, deserted, rebuilt one after the other, mirroring each other without seeing the other. Two riders at the end of the race, disputing provin the province where they meant to renew their youth despite their past. By the ebb of the flow, they restore, they restore like an unspeakable hope, a dream beyond memory. The cavalcade from Numidian times, supplanted by the heavy cohort of the Roman descendants riding up the depth of the night. For city besieged, too often have no taste for sleep anymore still await defeat, can never be surprised nor vanquished. So I have some questions, but I will reserve them for afterwards. Thank you, Stefania. And now we'll hear Feluin. Thank you, Natalia and Leticia for inviting me to this conversation. And I'm very happy to be part of this one. So I just want to highlight three points. There is a lot to say around the book and a lot, a lot has been already said. But one of, the point, one of the points I want to reflect is the notion of a colonial trauma, as, as Ranji has already uh, did, and the difficult recognition of the effect of the, of the colonial trauma. The second one is the notion of a colonial pact and the important work uh, Karima did in the elucidation of this notion. How does it work? And, and what is this kind of strange agreement? And at the, at the end, I want to talk about the healing practice, the staging of healing practice, how to rebuild the subjectivity. And it, it was a part I was very interested on. My sense is one of the very strong stone on which the book is built is this idea that the colonization leave a trauma in the subjectivity of the colonized people but also in the one of the next generation who are not contemporary of the original colonial violence. And I think this idea very important in regard of all the debate around colonial history, it's time to let the colonial history go, it's time to move on, et cetera, et cetera. So this kind of denial of, the, of this transgenerational heritage of coloniality in the individual subjectivity. And I think it was a very important statement of the book and a very Im important uh, demonstration. And, and, and what I found important also is, is the fact that the work of Karima Lazali is based on her clinical practice as a psychoanalyst and the, and the observation of that, the usual tool of this exercise of subjective liberation uh, were not enough to provoke in the Algerian population what she called a separation of the different injunction of the intimate, the social, and the political, and also this question of the inadmissibility of colonial history. And, and she said in the book that the French patients, most often from the third post-colonial generation, say that they were hindered by a colonial history, often experienced by their, their grandparents involved in colonization or in the independence war about which they know very little and what to do and how to, how to deal with 
uh, this kind of heritage that happens before I was born and I can't talk about for a reason I don't know. And at some point they, they formulate their impression of this, of being hostage of an inadmissible history. And, and this question of an inadmissible history, I think is very important. And, and, and the idea also that the colonial uh, coloniality in its profound effects, the effect on the subjectivity and the psyche is still an unfought. And I was thinking along this line on the African continent and on the, on the experience of the transatlantic slave trade, the trans saharan slave trade, the coloniality. And, and when I arrive in, the, in this part where- I came the club. J'ai l'impression que la difficulté de reconstruire la subjectivité et de nier l'impact que ça a eu sur le subjectivité and and without this part of history that is refused that is not transmitted from generation to generation this part of history creates mechanism that keeps the the subject in difficulty of life or shame etc etc and this inadmissibility of a colonial history so 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 oblige the the research or or Karima lazali to renounce to what, what you call the legend theory or the mythical part of history in favor of the backstage or the backyard in the historical fact. The second point I found very important, you know, and, and it's why it explained her transdisciplinary approach, you know, building on literature, on history and on psychoanalysis. The second point was this understanding of the colonial pact. And I found it very, very enlightening and, and Building on the situation of Algeria, she stated that Al the signifier Algeria, the object and the place, is associated with devastation, deflagration, and the result of the colonization. Associated with the devastation, first of all, it was first the question of the space. But what strikes me is that the idea that. What ah, me strikes is that after the liberation. La colonisation. matrix and with this idea that the colonial gesture is reiterated by the political power once, but also by the, the subjectivity, and and it's why the liberation does not mean an exit from the coloniality. And I think it's very important to also reflect in the decolonial dimension of of our the contemporary African history by stressing this point and this difference between liberation and, and liberty. And, and liberation, and to make this moment a kind of new genesis and 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 this strange colonial pact that is signed in the dark without author, but through this pact, the different colonized party consent to reiterate the colonial gesture in the aftermath of, of liberation and 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 this idea of building on the funnel that the colonists and the colonized agent are not just victims but they are also uh executors of this pact and, and they are taking you know their and they are i can say accomplice of their own alienation and and how does it work and why did they do that? It was very enlightening in her book and this idea of unconscious traumatophilia and how people are viscerally attached, you know, how they start loving their trauma and how this place became an important place of building themselves and their subjectivity. And the last part I want to reflect on also is the part she drove for a, for a liberation, for a rebuilding of subjectivities by drawing on the word of the funnel and, and by and by building on this idea that the liberation of the subject is such is therefore as matter as much as a matter of the of a singular 
as of the collective. There is no liberation of the collective without the liberation of the subject on one hand, but also the, the liberation of the subject require that of the collective. And, 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 this, and this idea implies the construction or the building of a stage that produce catharsis. So how to manufacture these possessions. And for me, it's, it's a very in, important aspect of the world. And, and, and where are the scenes or the stage or the, or the places of the cure? Where can we build? So using art, literature as a place or production of knowledge as a place of rebuilding of subjectivity seems to be very important. And how, and the use of the two notion of, of freedom of, or the two register of freedom of Franz Fanon. So one affirming that reality of freedom here and now is refusing the enslavement act, but in the other, freedom remain a project to come and, and, and as such involve beliefs, imaginary expectation, and sometimes illusions. And, and these two dimension of freedom being linked and liberation is certainly a part of an imaginary belief, but it can only lead to authentic imagination. So freedom is constantly debate as a potentiality and, and the coloniality is first and foremost taking possession of bodies, the physical bodies, the symbolic bodies, the languages, but also the imaginary bodies, all the legend and the myths. And, and by this means, this violence is also the encrustation of, of the psyche by the colonial spirit. And all the work is how to get rid of this colonial spirit and, and, and how to participate in the production of instruments of culture, of knowledge, that by reinventing one's alienation, and I love this idea, is to is in order the, to we better hope to tear oneself away from them, and it became an, an imperative or a necessity for the postcolonial countries. So probably I will leave here. I'm out of my time, and thank you. Thank you, Feluin. And now with all of that. We will see what, what, what Karima wants to do with all of that, if she wants to respond to any of it um, or want to offer some thoughts of her own. Thank you. Thank you for this reading of uh, my text. I will tell you where it started. And I, I want to tell you where I started from the concept of terror. I just started from the civil war and terror. It's, it, this, was not, it, this was not enough. So it wasn't enough on one hand because uh, I couldn't talk about terror from an individual part, point of view, uh, but I also had to talk. This is a question that we have to, that had to be treated uh, in, and we didn't have the tools to deal with the collective. It would have had great difficulties. So in order to go back to, to the what uh, terror implies, uh, and so uh, there is very little done on terror and civilization. And, uh, and the terror, uh, the, uh, the concept of uh, colonization came out. And so the, the question that we have to deal with is how does psychoanalysis deal with collective, uh, each one if in our own fields, we deal with the idea of subjectivity. But um, they can coexist uh, individual and collective stories. And this is some of them come from psychoanalysis. And of course, we have to have a colonial history. So 
you all talked about some and the others you all talked about traces. We have traces from literature and uh, prose. In, in terms of a repository. But the great difficulty is the way in which colonization, uh, French colonization in Algeria, Korea, it was a very large, I, I am part of this whole thing, and it needed to, French colonization in Algeria left traces and also the traces the traces and uh, the traces. There are traces, of course. There are possibilities that open up uh, for more work. So there's like a slice of traces, of course, the field of a pain and of pains in general. So, okay, so this uh, it's a uh, it's a I needed to uh, find a, this pain, which uh, needs to have a, a place, a, a, something to hold it. And of course, in literature, because literature is a work that is dealt with, with uh, uh, culture, and it's a place where things are archived, where things are filed. And since we don't have a repository, uh, which is the great work of literature, and is like a psychoanalyst, has something very, very specific. Uh, you cannot uh, apply uh, psychoanalysis to the characters. So what I'm interested in, it's the raw, uh, the raw, the raw speech. And this is what I work with, with the stories that we know of but they don't exist and, and they don't have, let's say, a subjective impact. If there are no traces and there is a, when there are no traces, there is an empty space, a blank, uh, uh, a gap. And uh, you, so we can talk about, uh, we can talk about body. I'm trying to be as brief as possible. Uh, so we can start uh, the, our discussion. Uh, the best way to way to describe to introduce uh, uh, a mutilated corpse is it's, it's paint that has left uh, no visible traces. So what I needed to find those places where there was traces. When there are traces, it's easy to do the work but something uh, something that is uh, that is uh, etched in there but it is not quite it so uh, the difficulty for a psychoanalyst is to find the uh, place of the collective the collective history on the subject history and we, we receive history and we're also actors of this history. So maybe we can talk about this, but we need to talk about this. Uh, maybe start with this. The, so the, the question for me, the traces and those the, the lot of, of traces, I didn't want to do something binary. This was a complex story. This is very, very important because colonization is, it eliminates all possibility of invention. Invention is part of culture. And, and that is why uh, literature is an important place for me because, because in spite of the desire to destroy the work of culture, something was not destroyed. Something else came out, something else came out. So there are two dimensions. The, 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 
the, the, the, the difficulty of what was heard, but then also the everything that comes together. Another thing that is very essential in my work is uh, not just uh, the colonial trauma, but the, uh, the, the political language and history. Uh, this is uh, something that happened. There was a, there were tension, there, there was a construction the, uh, between the individual and the collective. This was a very important point. Another thing uh, is that with literature, it, with uh, it, French colonization of, uh, of Algeria, uh, La coloniality was a practice of making people disappear, disappearing of names, bodies, making disappear the material and the immaterial. And this is something that came up again and again in Algeria. It's like colonization, and I think this is not just uh, happening in Algeria, it, this is a much more open question. This is between colonial practices, uh, and we saw this, of course, in the jihadist uh, uh, attempts, uh, we saw this throughout. So this culture of disappearance this is where literature tries to bring together cultures that had disappeared. Literature tries to archive, to, to be a repository for these disappearances. So this, this is uh, the, the fabrication, this is for, for burials, that is why Colonial trauma is so, so complex. And so this, and this is something that doesn't prevent one uh, for thinking that this is uh, an important thing because when we think about colonial trauma, we could identify and also the trauma of the colonizer. So two traumas and they're not, you cannot superimpose one on the other, but there are things that you need to understand because the colonial system, it's, a, it's also a, a civilization failure for the colonizer as well. Um, in, in, uh, did, did you understand what I said? This is a very important point about uh, about the, 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 the problem of the, the colonizer because he's going to, to impose that, uh, that on the colonized, that, that is what colonization, colonization, it's inside French politics. There is a failure, cessational failure, which is going to be displaced elsewhere. So they push it aside, and uh, and this is something that this was why it was so important for me to try to tell myself to to think about, for instance, when I went to uh, Iraq, the Middle East, Syria. What does it? What happens? when there is this displacement, this constant displacement, this constant, uh, what are these this failures, the civilization of failures that we push towards the other by the colonizer. And it is their own, their own failures that they project onto the other. And I think this is extremely important. If it's a, I think this is a, question that we need to uh, 
there is something there is something between them there's something that has to be seen this failure that comes up in the political economic and social aspects so this is what uh this is a very important question there is a great lady she took me she brought me this concept and the, and the traces of the disappearance because these are things that come up again and again this is the woman writer who led me who brought me to the center of literature and and this is a very pertinent question. And we know the situation of women in Algeria. And it's, it's a, and it's a, a multi-gender decision. War is the end of colonization. Colonization, it's, a, it's torture, it's all of that stuff including psychoanalysis. I think that this, this, this goes on from generation to generation, which have been colonized. And since Freud, we have been having a, a work on, on war. So we come back uh, to the question, what is really important the feminine question again and of course women are being sexualized i could call that serious uh one of the points i think that the domination in colonial subjects the colonization it it deals with domination of bodies domination of uh, language and an extremely masculine uh, concept. I want to answer your question. So I am going to stop here because now that we're going to have an exchange. Thank you, Karima. I don't know if anyone, um, Stefania, Ranji, Selwyn, if you want to um, say, respond, say anything to Karima's uh, words and reflections. Um, there are also a number of questions from the audience. So, but I, I would be happy to imagine a, a conversation if um, any of you. Yes, Ranji. You're you're muted. The mode of the seance. You're muted. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Sorry. <laughs> um, I, I think um, this this uh, this question of <clears throat> the phantom um, is fascinating to me. And um, Stefania, of course, brought up uh, the Abraham and Torok work um, uh, and the question of the anesthetic here. That um, that in a sense uh, um, uh, um, takes from uh, Ferenzi a, a different. Um, something different and distinct from what Melanie Klein does, um, if you like, uh, in, in the way in which um, the idea of the phantom, um, as I understand it, is uh, the phantom appears when, in a sense, the repression is at risk of, of rearing its head, as it were. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't appear until then. And in a sense, the fantasy of the exquisite corpse um, can be um, can be you know firmly in place in the crypt, um, as it were, um, and um, and and so I'm I'm interested uh, in that regard um, of the way in which uh, the the category of difference, um, if you like, um, is always threatening the, um, the, the, the process of memorialization that, um, that 
allows for um, that, uh, you know, you bring up Nicole Loho in the book, um, uh, the idea of the divided city that allows for the amnesia to become to become the um, the platform for the political um, and the way in which, in a sense, the idea of the phantom um, is uh, is always pushing against um, the uh, the the exquisite corpse. In this instance, that mutilated corpse is the exquisite corpse, as it were. Um, whether that idea of the phantom as difference is something that um, that we can think of in literary terms also as the rhythm of life. I mean, you talk, Karima, and I think this is something that Natalia brought up as well, about the kind of the gaps, um, the spaces um, in literature. Um, certainly, I think that, you know, many people have noted in the way in which the ellipses seems to be such an important part of of post um, post colonial uh, Algerian francophone literature, right? I mean, it, it's such an important part there. The, 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 there's a sentence that drops away. There's the space on the page, etc. And so I'm 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 interested in the way in which um, uh, um, the phantom. Um, if you like, is a marker of difference and that that might be a way of thinking about the feminine also. So I'll just throw that out there. I, I know, I know Feluin, Feluin also has a question, but, but I'll, we'll let Karima go back to Ranji. Écoutez, c'est une question très très compliquée. Il faudrait un très long développement. Juste en quelques mots. This is quite complicated. C'est-à-dire, ce qui n'a pas pu trouver son lieu d'inscription. Vous savez que. What we can find is in the. There is no such a thing as a body and a word. What happens? The there is this question, the word and the body. There's a word. It's a word that we uh, attach to it. The equivalent of a name. See, these are these things that, this is perhaps things that, if perhaps something that you want to say, the question, why? Why cannot go into to in spite of the names, in spite of the bodies? Because we have this question of disappearance. The work that is done by memory is that uh, it's it's a it's a way an approach to, so that we can do the, the rest. It's a question that children are very interested in because. It's also very cultural things, and it's very important in children's development. At that particular moment in which there is a, the perception of the real afterwards, this opens up our work. Yes. Uh I was very, very much interested in this in this question of literature as a repository of of traits that don't leave traces, and I'm very interested in this question of traces that don't leave traces. And do you look in other places, as immaterial places, as songs, as folk songs, as tales, as orality, to find their traces that are immaterial traces? in the work of rebuilding subjectivity. I just have an example in the Caribbean. In the tales, uh, Chamoiseau shows that most of the tales, they, they end around the idea of food because uh, the lack of food du du uh, during the slavery was a trauma, was a trauma. And, and, and this trauma is transmitted 
the true details and all the, the conclusion of those tales in some ways are around the food and, and, and feeding and, and hunger. So you can trace in jokes, in tales, in as a material space of expression, those traces. So I, so I just wanted to know if you if you are envisioning to do the, this kind of work. This was the one question. And, and the second a quick uh, question is the question of the rebuilding the, 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 the psyche. And for it, just to be more precise on what you think and how you see the staging of, of culture as a space of healing. So uh, I just wanted to reflect more about these two ideas, the idea of trace and the idea of the space of healing. Thank you. Uh. En fait, euh, dans les contes, dans les chants, nous avons des traces, justement. As a matter of fact, that is a very important question. You could say that. We could broaden in saying that the work of culture can, is going to bring about traces. In Algeria, we talk a great deal about uh, colonization, but it's exactly the opposite. We have been persuaded that, of, of, well, we, we talk about it so much about colonization that we have the traces, but there is something that is lost. And that this is that the traces, this is the thing that brought us to think about to create and this is why the work of historians and writers uh, indicated that there were other things and also and it was the disappearance of traces and i think this literature it's extraordinary because like uh, like that we find these traces in the in the bodies in gestures in the words, for instance, for a body that has been buried, and they're going to, they're going to, to, there is a song, for instance, or songs for bodies that didn't finally die, that didn't get to die and to be buried, because traces are not so not enough to uh, to deal with a colonial system and so so the, the this is more or less the reasoning behind it it's a, it's, it's through culture it is through the working that we do through um, culture maybe for the sake of time and i know we could continue and i have many questions that i would like all of you to be in conversation um, about, I'm going to ask some of the questions that the audience has um, posed, in particular ones that I think haven't been addressed uh, yet in the conversation. Um, there's a question from Samar Miled, who says, thanks us for our interventions, and asks, you know, the question of Islam as an instrument of resistance, but also reduced to an instrument, very interesting, and he is quoting there. How could this, right, the question of Islam as an instrument of resistance, how could it be linked to the rise of extremism in Algeria and Tunisia in the 90s? How can we explain the shift from resistance towards jihadism through the lens of colonial trauma? And this is something that um, Karima actually talks about quite at length um, in the book. So that is one question. Um, there is a... Um, uh, someone in the audience uh, who uh, has Kenyan ancestors, um, Wanja Michuki, who says, my Kenyan ancestors were not only colonized through terrible acts of terror, but our families were also torn apart with some joining the Mau Mau uprising and committing acts of fratricide. Terrible atrocities were carried out. Today, we the descendants have inherited the destructive separation of tribalism, having been created by the British to divide and rule. 
We're still colonized through the control of our economy by the colonizer, as well as our education and systems of political administration. Post-independence systems were introduced to maintain colonial commercial interests, to heal. They say we need dialogue focused on true reconciliation for truth, forgiveness, and redistributive justice. Reclaiming our sovereignty is essential to heal. So it's not really a question, but it's a comment I wanted to share because it opens up the book, as we have all been suggesting, way beyond um, the, the case of Algeria or the relationship between Algeria and France, right? Um, I, I also want to pose a question. Nuri Ghana, our colleague at UCLA, asks Karima a question about the place of pathology in your work. Could it be a place of a possible politics of resistance as it was for Fanon? He is thinking in particular in relation to the work you do, eh, Karima, with the notion of hogra or ogra. I don't know how to pronounce that. Not simply as a symptom of the colonial, but also, as in the case of Tunisia's Bouazizi, a platform of contention. So I, I, will, I will give those two and then we'll see how we continue, if you wanted to address the first one or the second one, the one about Islam or this one about pathology. Oui, oui la, la, la question de l'Islam, uh, en tout cas la question du, du djihadisme, ce qui a été appelé question about Islam. De, de cet Islam du radical, on va dire de cet Islam armé avec un projet, une idéologie internationaliste, voilà. Let's say, let's say, think about Islam, armed Islam with an international project. It, it was it, the, uh, the source of it, of course, is colonial, definitely in Algeria. The, um, the Islamists in the 1980s, the, as we call them in France, jihadists, and of course, we have problems with the words right now in France. Uh, these are the uh, these are uh, Islamists who are uh, claiming, you know, and uh, taking revenge on the uh, colonial history. And this is, of course, this is an international Islamic movement. It's not alien to to the uh, to colonial extortion to colonial uh, rupture and may even it may not be the same system but it is the same thing it's the same thing the extortion it, it's it's the same thing that islamist extortion and of course we have the same thing what happened with the colonial uh, extortion the person who spoke about Kenya and the, we could frame you that there is a trauma and it's an intergenerational trauma through which the the, uh, the same thing continues through generation, from generation to generation, individuals that experience this uh, symptomatology. And, and this is, of course, a, it's part of a collective history. You can take an individual and, and of course, and this around this question, this inheritance, this legacy that that their uh, heritage has been amputated, and this is how this trauma was born. And you can understand it that way. And then there were other things. Um, I think there was a third. Let me find it here. It was one about a pathology. Um, ah, oui. 
Wait, from Nuri Ghana, who asked about the place of pathology in your work, uh, in particular in relation to your notion of ogra, hogra, I don't know how you pronounce it. Oui, oui. Yes. Bon, si on parle de pathologie, c'est qu'on parle de normalité. Hein? Donc je, uh, je... We're not talking about pathology, we have to talk about... Uh, normal state. Individuals are uh, the like people, the people along the way. Little friends along the way because there are a lot of adventures that we uh, invent in our lives. Okay. It's like a right between the individual and the collective, something that uh, that becomes normal and they fabricate the pain, the pain and, and then we would have to treat it collectively. And with culture or individually because the collective trauma has not been treated so there are two dimensions here. We cannot give you a diagnosis uh, for this trauma. Uh, I think there is a issue or that is much larger and more interested and is terror, terror, because this is this is a huge trauma. This is what we have in our in our, our uh, slang, in our arc go is we have an impasse. We have uh, between an impact on the body. And it's the impact to the, the, the word that I used uh, well, is is the traces of an impact and and then you can talk about traces and then you can decipher this impact it's far from uh, being pathological i would say this is normalcy and i want everyone out there to know that we will share all the questions and the comments um with the panelists, so I, I won't get through all of them, but I wanted to ask, uh, offer you three more questions, um, Karima. Um, one has to do, uh, it's a question asked by Lydia uh, Keshine, and she asks about the role of anger, you know, if you could talk about anger in the colonial context. Um, and then there is a question by Reda Benzmaya, and I'm, I'm glad they asked this question, which has to do with, uh, they want to hear your comments on your opinion on the Stora report. Benjamin Stora, I mean, figures a, quite a, you quote him quite a bit in, in the book, um, but a, how, what do you think about the violence of the silences of that report, of the things it says and doesn't say? And then a third question by Walter Lucy, who is a, um, a, a student, I think, I believe, I hope I'm not getting this wrong, from their description, a graduate student in the University of Manitoba in Canada, who asks about, um, who is interested in the remains of colonialism and how we deconstruct binary oppositions. As a war per se, maybe the end of colonial, colonization, physical occupation, its history of suppression lasts generation after generation. What that, with that said, and to look ahead, how do we as researchers, graduate students in particular, but not only confront the remains of colonialism when all the research material is primarily Eurocentric? And I think here, the conversation that a Feluin was bringing up perhaps a, opens that up, right? Like what does one do when the, the archive is Eurocentric, right? But the, the place of literature in your, in your, and of culture in general might be a way of addressing that. So those three questions on anger, 
the Stora report that is small or big, and the question about archives that are not Eurocentric. J'ai bien noté les deux dernières questions. Je suis désolée, mais est-ce que juste vous pouvez me redire quelques mots de la première question? Ça me reviendra. La première de Lydia. Yeah, Lydia's question. Sorry, I have to uh, find it. Uh, she asked, what can you tell us about the role of anger, anger in Algeria as an expression ah. of colonial trauma and a phantom of colonial subjugation? Alors, je, je ne sais pas si Lydia fait allusion à la au rapport entre la colère et le Hérak. Le Hérak est ce mouvement de la société. Le un extraordinary mouvement. Il se trouve qu'en Algérie, depuis euh, septembre 2019, il y a It un started, mouvement qui est extraordinaire. C'est un mouvement extraordinaire depuis la guerre civile. Et, à la même manière, il y a une colère extraordinaire qui est animée par des gens créatifs, par des artistes. I don't know if it's anger, uh, uh, rage, or uh, happiness, but it is a declaration of existence. And uh, whether it's rage and joy and, uh, and, and angry at the same time, but uh, it's like rewriting the history in a different, the different way. Um, because the, the the history that needs to be read by by the dead. And I think that uh, this is, uh, it, it, it just not, it does not take away, doesn't tear the freedom to write. Uh, because this is the problem of uh, like, like uh, pulling something, uh, uh, so, so to, to take away something, to really tear off something that the other guy, the other person had been writing in his culture, but I think it is, but the uh, role of culture is this condition, it's not an individual work for each one, but it is a, a a, a, a something, an ensemble, a collective, uh, which is something, it, something that uh, shows individual expressions and at the same time, uh, collective dances that uh, appeals to our report to your own individual history. It's a, it's a collectivity. It's a. a, a, a it's a this, excuse me, and this is like this anger. This is anger that also evokes joy. And then the other thing, uh, maybe this, this is the other question. Uh, this is the other one about the, 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 the report. The star report is a lot more complicated because we're not still doing uh, job with culture is still an individual work. We are trying to, to build uh, and to commemorate starting from those, those particular moments. Commemorate has to be coupled with the changes in history for, for uh, this. For, for the ex-colonialists, of course, the ex-colonizers. And if this phantom, if this uh, has, uh, it's not being embodied in this commemoration. And so, so the relationship uh, does not exist and uh, and it cannot exist without real will, with a will to to create it. So, because this is 
this is the, the work that has to be done in Paris because uh, this is the history of French colonization in Algeria. It's, it's the history of everyone and every in, in, in Paris. It's the, the, it's the uh, foreigners, the immigrants, the, everybody's history. It's a, until you make it your own, it's not going to be useful. It's going to be useless. I, we, we're, there are not many reasons that we're going to lose something instead. Uh, so we need will. We need to be committed. We could uh, talk about the assassination of Boris Baudin. And, this is the, this is this for things like for instance the uh, the assassination of Maurice Morin. so this is, is something that has to be has to go we have to delve into uh, a, a, a real work that has to do more with dictionaries and with also the real job, job. Two more questions, and, and um, if, if that's okay with you, Karima, I know it's very late for you, and I know that you have um, arrived to this coming out of work, a long day of work. So, so if you're if if you're tired, if you want to stop, just tell me. Or is it okay if I ask two more questions? It's okay. That I ask two more questions? Yes, okay. Oui, 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 ça marche. Okay, <laughs> <Never> okay. <problem. laughs> ça. Merci. So um, the two questions I'll finish with from the audience. One it has to do with Palestine. And there were actually two people that posed the question. But the first one was Rihab Nasal, who asks you, Karima, where is the ongoing Palestinian trauma in your work, if there is any? A, and a, one of the echoes to that question insists on the importance of thinking through that question of Palestine and colonial trauma um, to be able to imagine free Palestine. And I think that's a, one of our, the crucial questions of our time. A, so I wanted to pose that question. And then my colleague, um, a, Soraya Tatli, asks you, and I'm translating loosely from French, so I apologize, Soraya, if I don't, uh, if I misrepresent at any point your question, but um, uh, she thanks you for your essay, and um, her remark is linked to the notion of civilizational failure, which she says is in fact very close to what Cesar said in his uh, discourse on colonialism. Uh, the question is clearly a, a very broad one, um, but the starting point is, what is the choice which guided uh, to privilege certain texts, right? Why did you, for example, um, she says, Asia Jebar comes, um, comes when uh, comes up when one thinks of literature as a place of archiving uh, and the question of burial. Right, so how did you choose the authors that you speak about uh, or don't speak about in, in the book? Um, so in a, in a way, why, why um, write uh, or why the blank space in Far and not in Jebar? So she's kind of pushing you and it brings back Ranjana's question in a way. Euh, alors, pour commencer avec la première question autour du trauma palestinien, euh, je renverrai au, au très start bon travail. start with the uh, Palestinian problem. Euh, et euh, en effet, ce qu'elle repère hein, autour de cette question de l'effacement rejoint... This question of displacement. Okay, and the displacement of the Palestinians in terms of colonial history. And if we put it in perspective, uh, 
the creation of uh, Palestine and the colonization and, and, of, and of course it's all very close together and uh, and I'm going to say this this creates a big difficulty because so if you if you can talk peacefully and calmly if you can talk talking about this uh, contemporary phenomenon uh, because there are links and uh, between this phenomenon and uh, and uh, Palestine uh, and this chaotic situation in history memory memory that uh, uh, we discussed before uh, uh, this memory it's conditioned by politics. Uh, it's a sp special order because, because politicians are the ones who condition memory. And you we see that history tries to open a screen to a different history, colonization as a creation of the state of Israel, and then of course the uh, Palestinian, we, we have to think about everything of uh, the whole thing. Uh, we have to think about the collective, uh, collective scale of the situation. So, um, because this is of course, this is something that frequented this is for the first, as far as the first question. The second question, the choice of uh, Shivar was, uh, was very important. It's, I think that we have to uh, uh, uncover or uh, find the gaps by telling a story, for instance. The question, but uh, the question, of course, the work that Jivar has done, uh, uh, because this is, of course, the job done by uh, French-speaking um, uh, writers in Algeria, and this is something that I've been working with, the writers who want at all costs to, to uh, fill the gap, and they are who are not afraid of their own gaps in their own memory, but. They, they're willing to push things to uh, push the envelope to the unthinkable. But also more contemporary writers. They are very many of them I could name, and they are people who are doing this kind of work. Okay. I wanted to thank again um, Ranjana, Stefania, and Feluin for being here with us, for being in conversation. Uh, uh, with Karima and with the extraordinary book that she wrote a couple of years ago and that clearly uh, has generated a lot of uh, debate already. While I, I actually think it, it's not even still out in English. I think it will be out like tomorrow or the day after. So, um, so uh, this is just the beginning, I am sure, of a lot of conversations that will happen about the book as it begins to circulate in English. So, so thank you, uh, Karima, for having written the book, for being here, and thank you all for being with us today. And I wish everyone uh, uh, a beautiful day or a beautiful evening.